Yep. Down and Out in Beverly Hills, another of those big hit comedies of the time. Yep. Uh, Fringe, then you came back to Australia, The Fringe Dwellers. Yep. This was a, uh, an important film because of the subject matter. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So tell us a bit about that. Uh, well, 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 Bruce had um, written this script and uh, asked me to do it. And I, I've, um, um, I, I felt some obligation to him uh, and I felt some obligation to the script. Um, That's what it's about. Um, it's about the fringe dwellers, the people who live, the Aboriginals who live on the edge of this uh, Queensland town. Uh, it was a pretty intimate look at their family. Uh, it centred on their teenage daughter and um, her uh, her struggles. I guess it, mm. it was a. It, it was just. I think it was fundamentally um, an endeavour to. Uh, if I can say, you humanise uh, this this Aboriginal family, just to make them like as any other family, but we're in in a particular situation. Now, were, I, remind me, were these primarily non-actors playing these roles, inexperienced actors? No, we had Bob Mazur and no, and the mother. I've forgotten the name. She she was quite a good actress, but the the girl was an unknown. She right. was a dancer, um, and there was a lot of kids that were. No, there were, there were a lot of non-actors in it. So does that present problems for you? Um, Working with inexperienced or non-actors, you make allowances, knowing that that's what you're working with. You know, you might, might just shoot a little wider <laughs> <laughs> in case something goes wrong. Or, um, but no, no, it it, it um, you know, they they were well rehearsed. Bruce, or Bruce and I by then were practiced yeah. in our both our crafts, so we sort of knew how to handle those situations. Well, you've jumped from the fringe <clears throat> dwellers, uh, and we're talking 1970s. Um, uh, 1987 now, into one of the biggest films of that era, Predator. Well, it wasn't a big film, of course. Uh, well, become uh, a big uh, hit. No, it, a big, a big, yes. big, big after release. Yes. Um, yes, that was very interesting. Uh, I, I got this phone call, call once again, I get the, back here, I always live in Australia. Uh, I got this phone call saying, um, uh, do you mind working with Mexicans? I, <laughs> I joked and he said, I don't mind working with Americans. And <laughs> um, but um, little did I know. Uh, and there was some weird thing because of union and regulation. They flew me first class from here to Tokyo to Vancouver and then straight over America and landed in Mexico City. So I didn't put a toe in... Mm. You know, I didn't quite understand the 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 reason for that, uh, but we spread it over a few days and had a wonderful trip to that night at their expense. But when I arrived there, um, there were a few things became. This is my first in visit to Mexico. Uh, that um, they'd picked this Mexican group who. Uh, um, well, basically, uh, oh, they had a, Mex a Mexican word for it, syndicato. And these syndicatos used to supply uh, lower level crew to Americans who would supply uh, key personnel. You know, it'd be one or two on the electrics from America, so one or two on the gap. Bring the heads of department. So, in so, so the, they do, these yeah. syndicato were basically uh, the the workers, the, All the, 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 yeah, and the, the, the lifters, level crew, the lifters yeah. and movers, and um, and anyway, uh, after the first shooting in the Palapa, and a lot of disasters happened because these guys just didn't have. Were well, you in the middle of the jungle? Yeah, uh, I mean, didn't. Like... But they, these guys didn't have have the knowledge that, yeah. that was supposed to go. And I explained this to the producer, pointing out that if we we're like this, it's going to you're, you're going to have to double your time. Going up to train these guys on the job. Mm. I, see, I, see, I said, why don't you get some people? I can't get anyone from the States. So I then crewed it all from Australia. <laughs> uh, with so the Predator people. was largely shot by Australian crew. With yeah. Australian yeah. DP and Australian yeah. crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realise that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was, uh, um, yeah, there were very, very few Americans. Uh, almost none in the uh, camera department, the uh, lighting department, the grip department uh, were all Australian. 
Now this- I mean, the key people. Sorry. Yes, so again, this is shot in the jungle with one of the biggest stars, or certainly after this film became one of the biggest stars yeah, in that genre, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and there's special effects, there's explosions, there's all sorts of things going on. And this is probably your first real experience with um, visual effects of some kind and, and special effects, explosions. How was it coping with that? Well, very interesting. Nearly all the explosions um, were actual. In camera on set. Uh, yeah. on, the, on the set. Yeah. But all, all the big explosions were, were for real. Mm. Uh, and uh, that, that worked well. But it was the, the actual predator that was supposed to be shot with this special heat camera, which we tested, or they tested in New York, we tested in Los Angeles, and it you know, brings all the different colours up for the different mm -hmm. heat level. What they didn't realise on the first day, which was very funny because they were all so secretive about this, uh, and that the uh, heat of the jungle is 92 degrees and everything's 92 degrees. And it just was one colour. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. And, uh, and out of that, we, we actually, the first time I'd seen a guy in a green suit um, mm. being the predator, and we shot that and the, the computer. Added the effect. It, it, and it, yeah. it, it, that, most of that was very, very much experimental. Uh, but. Uh, so all that heat vision stuff was done in post. You yeah, couldn't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the, the, um, the other interesting part about that movie, seeing as become such a uh, cult thing, is that um, Joel invited me one day to come and have a look at the new. Uh, predator suit uh, with the green suit and all the rest of it and uh, walked into this room in a hotel in somewhere other in Mexico and uh, there it is he said look at that I said looks like a look like a guy in a rat suit <laughs> and anyway we shot with it on the Friday the studio saw it on the Monday and immediately rang Joel and said, it looks like a guy in a rat suit. <laughs> From that day to this, Joel is convinced that I actually <laughs> pre-warned them. <laughs> they got that idea from you. <laughs> uh, but, um, and, and we closed down, closed down for a year. They shut down the production. Shut down the whole production for a year. Because they didn't think it was gonna work. Didn't think it was gonna work. They were very clever uh, because um, McTiernan was a reasonably inexperienced, done one or two movies, and it, it was all sort of very nebulous, very hard to follow, I don't mm. think, for anyone in the studio. So he went back and cut for a year while Arnold was doing other great How work. much had you shot at that point? We shot about three quarters of it. Right. And um, and uh, so he edited, the, edited that and they, they loved it and then we got back in a year later. And, oh really? I didn't realise that. <coughs> and, uh, and finished it. So what was the bit, was it the third act, the climax mostly? It was, it was the actual climax, yeah. 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 It was, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, really, really a very, very rough shoot. It was almost zero lighting in the jungle. Yeah. Because you can't light in the jungle. If you put up a big light or any light, it just lights one tree <laughs> <laughs> near the camera. That's it. So you, you just, and you know, with them moving around like that, was just totally impossible. So how do you cope, natural <coughs> light and not enough natural light, how do you deal with that? Uh, well, it, uh, I, I had to shoot it at 2.8 and, uh, and, and it worked out pretty well. Yeah, it looked pretty good. I, I, I didn't, you know, I ran tests obviously, but um, it, uh, it, it was a great, ex uh, great experience. 